no way. Dude, one of our videos just topped 100,000 views. Whoa, that's awesome, dude. This calls for a crisp high five. What the hell happened to your hand? Hmm? Oh, that. I accidentally cut it off making breakfast this morning. It's grown back. Now, I believe you owe me five. I'm gonna pass. Fist bump. You're not getting it. Hey guys, and welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning good. Now guys, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there was a movie called Deadpool released a few weeks back. Oh, you did? It's made over $600 million? Never mind. Well guess what? It seems you guys all want to see the same thing. There's just one problem. I've seen the movie twice now, and there's no healing in the movie at all. Well, except for one scene when his hand starts to grow back, and it's only a little baby hand. Oh, that's gross, really. Kind of looks like that dude from Scary Movie 2. Just my strong hand. So today, we're doing that. Now, in order to complete this effect, you'll need two things. To film your actor in a coat where they can easily hide their own hand out of view, pretending that they are less than handy, and of course, a baby hand. But Grant, where are we gonna find a baby hand? What, you don't have access to a baby hand? Pfft. Well, never fear, I've got you covered. Yes, I enlisted the help of my six week old son, Dexter, and I shot both his hands on a green screen and keyed them out for all of you to enjoy. So be sure to download below and thank my boy in the comments. Now let's get to work. Okay guys, here we are in After Effects. I've got my comp set up and ready to go. Now for this episode, I wanna focus on the high five shot since it's the most complicated. Now before we begin, I just want to talk about how I made the baby hand itself. Basically, I didn't make it. I just waited until my son was asleep in the studio, moved his bed in front of the green screen, and then I used a few t-shirts to prop up both his hand and his elbow to keep him straight. Which is why they don't really move around much. But even that took three different shoots to get right. Now I've keyed four different hand poses out for you, and they're available for download in the description. I've knocked them down to 1080p, but since they are close-ups, it's not going to affect the end result too much. So our first step is to duplicate our footage because one layer is for our sleeve in the front and the other one is going to be our background layer. Now we're going to skip ahead on the timeline until our hand has already come up and it's nice and sharp. Hit B to shorten the comp temporarily and let's continue focusing on just this area. We'll touch on the other part later on. From there, let's select our top layer, head up, grab the pen tool and we're going to draw a mask along the top of the sleeve here and finish it off roughly around the bottom. We'll then hit F and feather it out around 5 pixels. Now if you're using After Effects CC, all we have to do here is right click, hit track mask, jump over yonder and hit the play button. After what seems like an eternity, you'll have a track mask. Now if you're in CS6 or lower, click on this episode right here and it'll show you how to add a motion mask. As you can see now, we've got our tracked mask and if I turn off the background layer, you can see it looks pretty good. Our next step is to track the sleeve of our coat. So to do that, let's jump up to layer, add a new null object and call it track. We'll then head right down to our bottom footage layer, head over to tracker and select track motion. We'll select a good point, mm, this'll do. And then we'll hit the play button. Let's skip ahead to our track being done, hit edit target, select our null object, hit apply and then hit okay. Our next step is, you guessed it, adding our baby hand. So from the project menu over here, let's open the hand download folder and select the hand. This one'll do. Now don't be all dismayed if the hand you like is a left and you need a right. Just drop it in below our sleeve layer, head up to edit, transform and flip horizontal and BAM! It's now the right way round, or the left way. Ugh, moving on. So our next step is to scale the hand down and reposition it so that it looks like a baby hand is coming out of the sleeve. There, that looks pretty good. From there, you need to blend the hand into the scene as best we can. Now this is a two-step process, gang, and I actually skipped one of the steps in the teaser due to time constraints. Our first step is color correction. Now by this, I mean take a look at your skin tone of your actor and try to match the hand as best you can. I'm using color raise to three, but you can use whatever you have to match the actor's color. If I turn the correction on and off, you can now see the difference. Much better, isn't it? The second blending technique is softening the image something I skipped in the teaser. We need to blow this image slightly because we're shrinking down a really sharp image, which believe it or not, makes it even sharper. So let's head to effect, blur and sharpen and add a fast blur. 
Now based on my shot, I might blur the amount anywhere from four to seven. And as you can see, it brings the sharpness down and blends the shot way more. Now that we have that sorted, let's parent the baby hand to our null object. And if we do a quick preview of this part of the comp, it's now looking pretty good. But what about me raising the hand? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I did say we'd address it later. And it's now later. For this, we're gonna animate both the sleeve and the hand frame by frame until they're out of the shot. So let's start off with our top layer, the sleeve. We're gonna collapse down the mask menu, find our mask path, and then go frame by frame animating the mask path until the arm is out of frame. Now that that's done, let's move on to the hand, shall we? Yes, we shall. Let's select the hand, hit P, hit the stopwatch, then hit R and hit the stopwatch again. We'll then go frame by frame, adjusting both the position and the rotation of the hand to match the movement of the arm like so. We'll then turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer and check out a preview. Not bad, but one last step. Since the motion blur is so, well, blurry, we need to animate the mask feathering to match it. Because as you can see, the mask feathering just looks a little bit too clean. So let's start from the first frame by hitting the stopwatch and crank it up till it looks, well, good. Whoops, well, the mask feathering would actually look good if the mask was in the right place. Let me just move that back. There we go. We'll then skip ahead a few frames, bump it down a little bit more, and then skip ahead right to when our hand's right up, and then we'll bump it back down to our five to seven range. Now let's check out a preview. Nice. And that, my friends, is another episode sorted. Out of all those steps, you'll get something like this. No way. Dude, one of our videos just topped 100,000 views. Whoa, that's awesome, dude. This calls for a crisp high five. What the hell happened to your hand? Hmm? Oh, that. I accidentally cut it off making breakfast this morning. It's grown back. Now, I believe you owe me five. I'm gonna pass. Fist bump. You're not getting it. So that's my take on Deadpool's baby hand effect, using an actual baby's hand. Not hard, looks super weird, so try it for yourself and freak out your friends. But that's my time, gang. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, chimichunga that subscribe button. Here's the Facebook, here's the Twitter, and until next time, Keep learning.